Hello friends, it's Kathy Clement with Kathy by Design. It's Wonderful Wednesday and look what we're making today. This fabulous giant tag featuring bees and flowers. It's perfect for mom for Mother's Day. If you'd like to find out how to make it, stick around. The tutorial is coming up in just a few. This is the first Wednesday in May, so it's time for us to do our tag of the month. Second Wednesday is our banner of the month, then birthday card of the month, and flower of the month. So tag of the month is always one of my favorites. And I was just in the mood to pull out my Graphic 45 Let It Be collection. This came out in 2022. It has everything I love. It has sunflowers, it has bees, it has beehives, it has beautiful stripes, this cheery yellow, green, red, and black color palette, and it's just a great collection. This is the 8x8 I'm showing you. If you have this in your stash, you might want to pull it out so that you can play along with me. I also have the 12 by 12 which has... I've used mine quite a lot, but there's this cut apart sheet, this really sweet sheet, and then this cut apart sheet. I think there's also a border sheet. Then I have the patterns and solids, which we might use. And these just follow the color palette of the paper collection. And they're just great background patterns that are easy to work with no matter what you're making. Then I have some chipboard left in my stash. I have some stickers left in my stash. I have journal cards and I have a few pieces of the die cut ephemera. So that's what we're gonna be using for papers. Our tag this month is going to be this awesome Tim Holtz Ideology uh, medium-sized craft tag. I've painted my edges, as you can see, with black chalk paint. So this is ready to roll. And then we're going to be making, I just felt in the mood to do this. I pulled out my Amazing Paper Grace uh, pop-up vignette watering can dies. The, these came, I can't remember what year, quite a few years back. But it was one of my favorites. And I made some cute little flowers with them then. This is what the flowers look like when they're done. So we're going to adapt these flowers. I'm gonna show you how to make them. Um, and then we're gonna make the watering can together. So what are we making? Well, how about this giant tag? I am so excited about this project. I love making special Mother's Day projects, even though my mom is no longer with me. I love to make these gifts and give them to other moms who maybe wouldn't receive anything. So this is a Tim Holtz Ideology Medium Craft Tag. It's big, it, it's like five and a half by I think nine and a half or 10, something like that. And I've covered it with Graphic 45's Let It Be Papers. This is an amazing paper grace vignette die that I've turned into a little 3D watering pot. I've added vintage buttons from my stash, Renee Bouquet's beautiful honeybees, and all these handmade flowers that are part of this set. I'm gonna show you how to do it in the tutorial that's coming, but I have to show you what's on the back side of this tag. Take a look, it's a tea party in a box. So this will stand up on its own. It's a great gift for mom, super cute in the kitchen. She can put photos or recipes in the pocket. What I have in here right now is a little vintage silver plate spoon, a lemon and ginger tea bag, a really adorable bookmark, a really sweet note card where you can write a message and if you wish you can tuck in a gift card there's a little journal card in here and a packet of sunflower seeds which is really fun kind of goes with the theme then a honey stick and this package of biscoff cookies so it's a wonderful gift for mom stick around we're gonna make it together in just a minute I think we'll get 
started making our flowers because then we have that out of the way. Here's a whole little field full of them that I made. I die cut my pieces from the patterned papers. The wonderful thing about making flowers is you can always use your scraps. It's a great way to use up scraps. And that is exactly what I did when making these flowers. So I'm gonna show you how to put this together. It's very simple. It's such an easy flower to make and they're so cute and cheery. So your die has basically this background piece. Then you have this middle layer piece. You have this, I call this the eyelashes. And then you have the center piece. And then you have the leaves. And there's also a stem. And as you can see, I cut mine all out of patterned paper. The way I shaped these was very simple. I just took my stylus and a pad and I kind of rounded them up a little bit. I just wanted them to have a little bit of dimension. I didn't want them completely flat. I wanted to add a little bit of 3D to them. And then I just kind of came in with my fingers and squared off the ends because these are supposed to be, I think, cone flowers. And if you've ever noticed the petals on cone flowers, they do kind of have that squared off end. Then the next piece that goes on is this middle layer, and I cut this from some yellows. And again, I just kind of went in very quickly, rounded out my top a little bit, and then this is gonna go just adhesive here, and it's gonna sit right here. So easy, so, so easy. And then I'm just gonna round it out just a little bit more, okay? Then the next piece is this little eyelash piece. And all I do here is put my adhesive on and then layer it over that center piece. And do you see how cute these get with each layer that you add? And then we have our flower center. And that just sits on the top, super easy. Then here's our stem, I cut mine out of patterned paper. And the die, this actually is double the width and it's perforated down the middle and you just uh, either tear or cut it in half. So there's our nice long stem. And then I just put my adhesive on the stem and add my leaf like this. So that is how, I mean, it just, I told you, super quick, super easy. Now, if you wanted to come in and add glitter to the center or some flower soft or prills, you certainly could. I decided to just leave mine plain. I might change my mind before it's all said and done. I've been known to do that. But for now, this is done and it can go over in the pile with all our finished flowers. Next thing we're going to do is work on our watering can and I'm one of those that when I die cut I like to do multiples so I've done this red as the base and this was a vignette die which meant it was a pop-up but we're not going to do pop-ups so the first thing we're going to do is cut the tabs off of all of these and I'm just going to ink my edges a little bit to add a little definition and I'm gonna, I just wanted to show you how you just come in and you just take your scissor and cut that tab off because you don't need it. And I have die cut this three separate times. I like to do that because it makes it really sturdy. Uh, I feel like it gives it a lot more presence, but I'll show you the other reason I've done it that way. First, this is gonna be our background one. This is gonna go in the foreground. And I'm just gonna ink in between here. And we're gonna put our adhesive on this background piece. Oops, getting ahead of myself. And I wanted a red watering can. I thought that would be really cute. With this with these papers 
So I'm overlapping it just a little bit so I get a little bit of a drop shadow on here. It just adds a little more presence to the page. Now this one, I'm going to cut. Let me see, how did I want to do this? I'm going to cut just this. Um, heavily engraved part. Because first I thought I wanted this to be galvanized and then I decided, no, I wanted it to be red, but I want to have the um, insets in there. There, that's where this goes. Okay. And then this piece, I'm just gonna cut right along here. I'm just following the lines on the die itself. The nice thing about these etched dies is that it's very easy to follow the contour and just trim. And this is going to go right here, just like this. All right. So then the next thing is our um, spout. And I have this weird, oh, here it is. So again, I want, I'm gonna hold this up, hopefully you can see, I'm just gonna cut the red off right here. I'm going to put it just like this. And again, I'm kind of overlapping. All right. And then there's this little piece that sits in the bell. We'll call that the bell. And this has all the little watering holes in it, which is super cute. All right. Then this piece lines up right here. So we're just going to put some adhesive right here and we're going to line this up. Oops. Just like that. Then we have the handle and again I die cut two of these because I wanted the extra strength and the the um, width of it. So we're just going to overlap these. And adhesive goes here and here. And this sits right here. So you can see this comes together really quickly. And then I'm going to add on the back, I'm going to put some 1 8 inch foam adhesive here and some foam adhesive here and here. This part I'm going to kind of round out using my fingers. There we go. Like this. Whoops. All right. Let me glue that back on there. So this part will glue down onto my tag. And then this part will sit up so I have dimension to put my flowers in. So that finishes that. That's not hard. Now, if you want, you can come in with black ink. And go over these raised portions. I used a metallic gray cardstock and it took the embossing from the from the um, dye very very nicely. I'm going to come in with a little damp paper towel and wipe away some of this ink from the red. But I'm going to leave it mostly on the gray because I like how it kind of makes that engraving pop a little bit. Okay, so there's our watering can all done. All right, friends, we're going to start putting this tag together. 
And the first thing I have is this piece that I've cut from the 12 by 12. And this, the way I did this was I just measured the width and then took about a quarter of an inch off. So I went five and a quarter and I cut this to nine and three eighths, which is a little bit short, but we're gonna fix that. It's not a problem. And this is gonna be the front of our tag because I want this to be a two-sided tag. I'm thinking Mother's Day. And um, I think this will make a really nice gift. So I'm just gonna put this down here. I did ink my edges with black soot distress ink. And I'm just straightening this out. I traced the corners. What I did was I traced the corners and laid my paper down and traced the corners and then trimmed out. And from the back, I traced a circle where I wanted to use my half inch circle punch. All right. So then I went into my journal cards. I took this four by six and I matted it on chipboard. And we're gonna glue this down sort of as our focal image. And I'm coming over about a half an inch from the side and I've left room for myself to get my ribbon through the top of my tag, all right? I went into my sticker sheet and found this really cute yellow and black stripe. And I'm gonna put some adhesive down because I'm not sure how well the adhesive on these stickers is going to play with this painted surface. And I want to make sure that this stays where I put it. So make sure I'm straight and look how cute that is. Now we're going to bring in our watering. So as I told you, I have put double layers of foam tape on the spout, on the handle, and at the base. We're just gonna peel these off. And then we're gonna position this where we want it to be. I'm gonna take adhesive and put it on the top lip and do you see how that creates instant dimension all right and now comes the fun part we get to bring in our little flowers and adhere them in here to create a dimensional scene so i've put foam tape on the back of my flowers and i've varied it some has um three rows of foam tape some has two some has one. And I think I wanna go ahead and put some foam tape under my flowers too, just to make them look a little more perky. I wasn't sure about that until I put them down, but I do wanna do that. So I'm putting one up nice and high. And then I'm going to take one that has two on it. And I'm going to add it in a little bit lower and kind of going the other direction so that they look like they're really in a watering can. To stick. I wanted to stick to me, not to the flower. All right. All right. Now I want one with just one 
layer on it. I'm going to trim the stem a little bit. Pick this up carefully. We'll just go more like that. There we go. And this one right here. Isn't this cute? The way they're all the different colors and it kind of matches the designer paper. I just thought that would be really fun. So another tall one. Let's stagger it a little bit though. Right about there. There we go, just like that. <sighs> Let me see. This has two on it. Stick it in. But I want its head to be turning that way. There we go. And then one last little short one. right here okay and you can dress this up with whatever you want to dress it up with I'm not going to do a whole lot right now because I'm going to switch to the other side and I want this to be able to lay sort of flat right now so let's flip this over all right and on this side what I've prepared is another piece to go from the top on the top and this is from the patterns and solids which I actually really really like in this collection this is going to go right here and I did this the same way I'm going to go ahead and slip my ribbon in and this is actually red ticking that I just tore into strips I've got two pieces of it, and I think I can get them both in. All right. Isn't that cute? So two going this way and two going this way. And then I've got this black houndstooth. This is the 3 8 inch. That's cute. I'm going to shorten my tails just a little bit. All right. Flip this over, and I'll eventually tie a bow to go on this side as well. Now, what we're going to do is create a box pocket for the bottom of this tag. This is a 110 pound black card stock, and I've cut it to nine and a quarter by six. And then I put it on my scoring tool, 
and I scored at one and two and I turned it and scored again at one and two and then I turned it and I scored again at one and two. All right. Now you're gonna come in with your scissors and you're gonna cut these two outside one inch by one inch squares off entirely. And then on this rectangle here, this one, one inch by two inch, you're just gonna cut straight up. Okay. Now bring in your bone folder and you're going to fold on your scored lines. Only keep this little guy one piece. Don't score him as too little pieces. But everything else I'm just going to fold. If you see things hanging over like this little piece right here, I'm going to trim that out. The rest of this looks pretty good. I'm also going to come in right here and I'm going to cut a little triangular piece out of each of our little tabs. And this is just gonna make it that it will fit and glue into the bottom of our box more neatly. So I'm cutting just like this long triangular piece out. Now, our box is face down. I'm putting glue on these tabs. You can also use score tape if you prefer. Missed there. Sometimes it's hard for me to see black on black. Okay. I just brought this in and it wants to roll in just like this and make this really nifty little corner. I'm just going to trim this little nerd off right here. These pieces fold in. This piece folds up. Put adhesive here and here, adhere this so that everything is neat and square, and you've got yourself a box pocket. Now sometimes I will come and take binder clips and just kind of do like this until that glue sets up the way I want it to. All right, whoops. Paper clips work too. I usually have a little dish of paper clips on my desk there. That works even better. It doesn't take long for this particular uh, dries clear adhesive to hold, but um, you know, it just helps it stay nice and square. All right. So on the front of this, I've cut a piece of this yellow stripy paper. And I can see I need to trim this just a little bit. It's a little bit long. And it's a little bit wide, actually. So cut a little bit off of this side. So what you're going to end up with is five and an eighth by three and seven eighths. And that seems to be just right. Glue this down. It's easier to do all of this before you glue this 
onto your tag base. All right, now I'm gonna cut some pieces to cover these sides. I'm gonna cut from my scraps. And these are gonna be three and seven eighths by seven eighths, okay? All right, so you can see I've covered my sides with some scraps of the honeycomb paper. And then I've got this border stamp piece that was from the bottom of the 12 by 12 that we used to cover the front. And I'm gonna line this up along the bottom. I'm only gonna put adhesive along the bottom. And right about here, and right about here because what I wanna do is have a pocket on my pocket, which one pocket's good, two pockets is even better. So see, now we have a little pocket here for a small journal card, which is really fun. Now bring in your tag, place your adhesive, Line this up so that it stands, because this will stand for display, which is so fun. And there we go. I'm gonna come in, can't find my bone folder. <laughs> that's cute y'all and that is how you make a dimensional tag big tag for mom that's like a gift box so I'm going to put some goodies in the box I'm going to dress this up like you saw at the beginning of this video and get this ready to give what a fun project I hope you enjoyed this I will have a link in the description box below to a linked supply list on my blog so you can find these products that are still available if you need to add them to your stash and um, don't forget to give this video a like don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can join in on all the wonderful Wednesday fun that we have here and uh, thanks for joining me go get your craft on Kathy Clement Kathy by design bye